Hey everyone, so today we're going to be making an intermediate and beginner friendly scratch game. So the object of this game is to get the unicorn to jump over the balls and not touch them. So you get as many points as you can before you get hit by the ball and the game ends. So it's very, very fun. And so I'm going to show you how it works first and then I'll walk you through the steps. So to get started, I'm going to show you my wind flag clicked and we'll be using our keyboard functions of our space bar to jump and our left and right arrows to move the unicorn side to side. So let's, let's do this. So as you see, I get points every time I miss a ball and if I get hit by the ball, the game ends. Okay, so to get started, you're going to log into your Scratch account. If you don't have an account, that's okay. You can still make this game without having an account. So as you get ready, we'll open up a new Scratch project. From here, we're gonna to go to our Scratch box on the right-hand side of our screen here. You'll see the nice yellow cat. If you go below that, our Scratch box, you'll see Sprite 1, so it'll be highlighted in blue. Go ahead and click the trash can to delete the cat. We'll go down to where it says select a sprite. And from here, we're going to type in unicorn in the search bar. I'm going to do this nice fun one here. And then next, we're going to add our ball. So going back to our sprite selector. I'm going to type my ball in. Actually, it's right here, so perfect. And standard, it starts off in this like yellowy orange color. I want to change mine to a different color. So to do that, we're going to go to the left hand side of our screen. If you look at the code tabs, the first one says code, costumes, and sounds. We're going to click on costumes. And I'm going to pick ball C. And then I'm going to go back to code. And then next, I'm going to choose my game over. So to make the game over sign, we're going to go back to where our sprite is. We're going to go up two spaces to where it says paint. Click on that. I'm going to leave my text as purple. But if you want your text to be any other color, click the fill, select the color. So you can slide it over to select any color you'd like. And then when you're ready, you're going to click the T for text. You can also change the font. I'm just going to leave it, but you can do whatever you want. And then click anywhere on that screen, and then you can just start to type your message. So mine's just game over. And then you can select the box to change the size. So once you click inside the box, it's going to make it, you can make it bigger or smaller. And then we can move it once we go back into the code space. So once you pick your color, your size, all of that, go back to code. And then that's actually a pretty good spot. So I'm going to let it stay there. And then next, we're going to choose our backdrop. So once you go right back down to our space with our sprites, right next to it, you're going to have a little photo where you can choose your backdrop. We're going to go up and click select our backdrop. And for mine, I just chose the blue sky because it's super simple, but you can choose whatever backdrop that you like. And from here, I'm going to go back to my unicorn and we're going to start coding. All right, so for this game, we want every time the green flag is clicked for our game to begin. So to do that, we're going to go over to the left hand side of our screen. We're going to do the yellow bubble that says events and we're going to drag a win flag clicked. Next, we want to set our score because we are keeping score for this game. So we need to make a score to count down or count up rather every time our game begins. So we're gonna to go to back to the, the left hand side, the orange bubble that says variables, it's gonna to be toward the bottom. We're gonna make a variable. We're gonna make sure we click the bubble for this sprite only, and we're gonna name it score. Perfect. So if you did that correctly, you'll see unicorn score in the, in the sprite box on the right hand side. 
Okay. And then next we're going to have that little bubble where it's checked, check marked score. And we're going to drag that out to the side. We're going to use that later. And then next we're going to pull out set, change that to score. Okay, and from there, we want our unicorn to start in the same spot every time we begin the game. So we need to set the X and Y coordinates. To set those coordinates, we go back to the left-hand side of our screen. We're gonna to go to the blue bubble that says motion. We're gonna go down about four code blocks, two or five, five code blocks, to go to X and Y. We're gonna drag that out. I'm gonna change my X to zero and my y to negative 30. So for now, you can just set your numbers as my numbers. And as we play our game, especially if you have a different size screen or you used a different background, you might want your, your unicorn to start in a different spot. So as we progress through the game, you can adjust those coordinates as you need to. So for now, you can just start at zero and negative 30. Okay, and so next, we want our unicorn to show and hide or disappear and reappear. And the point of that is when the game begins, we want our unicorn to be there so that we can see it jumping over the balls. And if the unicorn loses or touches the ball and the game is over, we want them to hide. So to do that, we're gonna go to our looks, the purple bubble. We're going to drag out a show and we're gonna drag out a hide. First, we're gonna put the show under the coordinate so every time the game starts, it shows up. Next, we're gonna create a loop. So loop, as you probably know, because you might have been doing this because this is a more advanced uh, game, the loops are going to allow whatever is inside, the conditions inside, to continue to run until we say otherwise. So for this, we're going to grab our loop from the left-hand side of the orange control. We're going to do a forever loop right underneath our show. And within that loop, we're gonna grab an if-then statement. So it's actually gonna be right under the forever. Grab an if-then. We're gonna drag that hide inside of the if-then statement. And once you've done that, we need to make our unicorn do something when it touches the ball. So it doesn't just kind of touch it on its own. We need to make sure that something happens when it touches it. So that's going to be using our sensing blocks. Our sensing blocks are going to be on the left-hand side on the light blue bubble. The very first one that says touching mouse pointer, we're going to drag that out, bring it in between the if-then. And from the drop-down menu that says mouse pointer, you're going to select ball. Perfect. And right under that, we're gonna do our broadcast message. So our game over is gonna be our broadcast message. So to do that, we're gonna go back to the left-hand side. We're gonna to go to our events. We're gonna do broadcast message and bring it right underneath, there we go, our hide. From the drop-down menu, select new message. And we're gonna type game over. Perfect. And that is going to be the first part of our code block for our unicorn. The second part is going to be setting up our jumping. So when we hit the space key, it jumps over the ball. So we need to make sure that we set the code for that so that it does it every single time. So going back to our events, we're going to do pull out when space key pressed. You can bring this anywhere on the, on the screen. And then next, we're going to go to our variables. We're going to grab change my variable. From the drop down menu, we're going to do score. So every time it successfully jumps over a ball, you'll get a new point to your score. And then next, we're going to choose our glide. So going back up to motion, it's the blue bubble. We're going to pull out two glides. So we're going to do glide one second to X and Y. And then we'll grab the same exact one again. Perfect. So within that same space of motion, let's just scroll down till we see X position. It's gonna have like a little box next to it. And we're gonna drag that X position into our X, just like that. 
And then we're gonna grab another X position into the bottom X, just like that. So for the first one on the Y where it says negative one, we're gonna change that to 50. On our second Y, we're gonna change that to negative 30. Perfect, so we did pull our score out, so we don't need this extra score. Sorry, you could swipe that away. And that space bar is gonna set up our being able to jump. Next, we wanna set our keyboard functions for our left and right arrows so that we can move when we hit our arrows, it'll move our unicorn left to right if we need to move closer or further from the ball or however you wanna move on the screen. So to do that, we're gonna to go to our control, or no, sorry, our events. We're gonna grab a win space key pressed and we're gonna grab another one. We're gonna change the space to our right arrow and then we'll change the next one to our left arrow. And then we want them to be able to move, right? Left and right. So we're gonna to go to our motion, our blue bubble. Very first code block is gonna be move 10 steps. We're gonna pop that right underneath, grab another one, pop it underneath. And for our left arrow, we're gonna change the number 10 to negative 10. So that's gonna allow the X axis to move left and right. So just play around with that for a second. Just hit your left arrow, hit your right arrow, and you can see your unicorn moving. Just like that. Perfect. And if you hit your space bar, it should be jumping. So you can move it, jump, move, jump. Perfect, so once your code block looks like this, you have your win flag clicked in all of your code and your loops, your second with your win space key pressed, and then your third and fourth with your right and left arrows, we can move on to coding our ball. So as you're ready, we'll click on the ball sprite. And to get started, we're gonna do our win flag click. So going back to our events, grab a win flag click. We want this to hide. So to hide, let's go back to our looks. We're gonna drag out a show and a hide because we'll need both of them. The hide will go right under the wind flag clicked. We're gonna create another loop could be when we want the ball to continuously flow. So to do that, let's go do our control, grab a forever loop. We're gonna, from the same control, grab a weight, put that inside the loop. I'm gonna leave mine at one second. If you, as you play the game and you wanna change your time, please do so. And then we're gonna create a clone of the ball. So we're not gonna duplicate this ball. We want the ball to come and go versus just staying. So to duplicate it, or not to duplicate, but to clone it instead, we're going to go to our create a clone of myself, bring it right underneath our weight, and that's gonna be the first block of code. The second block of code, when I start this clone, so it's gonna be right above where we found our create our clone, we're gonna set it to a position. So we want the ball to continuously, again, scroll across the screen. So we're gonna to go to our blue motions, go down five blocks to go to X and Y, change our X to 200, and we're gonna change our Y to negative 75. Okay, so with these coordinates, this is just the coordinates that work for my computer and my screen that I'm on. As you play your game, you might need your ball to be a little bit higher on your screen or you might need it to be a little bit lower on your screen. So you can take a moment now if you like to pause the video and just hit the green flag and just see where your ball is kind of flying toward your unicorn. It might be way, way too high or way too low, or this might work for you. So just take a few moments to set the coordinates that work best for your game and your screen. And when you're ready, we'll jump to the next block. Okay, so I'm assuming you're ready. <laughs> so next we're going to set our show. So that show we dragged out, let's bring it right underneath our coordinates. Next, we're gonna create another loop. We're gonna grab a forever loop from our orange control bubble. Right underneath there, we're going to grab a move block from our motion, grab a move 10 steps, put it inside 
loop. And then next we're gonna add another loop and if then. So let's go back to our control. From there, let's grab an if then, and that's gonna be right underneath our move and still inside our forever loop. Okay, so making sure that, I'm gonna drag it out so you can see, that our forever loop and our move and our if then are all together. And then that block will all go underneath our show. Okay. And from there, we're gonna do our sensing. So if our ball is touching our unicorn, remember we set it up so that something happens. The game ends essentially. So we wanna get our sensing block. It's the light blue bubble, sensing. Grab out your touching. And once that if then is highlighted, go ahead and drop that in. From the drop down menu, we're gonna change mouse pointer to edge. And then we're gonna do a delete this clone. Just go back to your control, grab a delete this clone and pop that in. So again, the balls are gonna continuously scroll through as it goes to the edge of the screen, it leaves and then a new one comes back. So again, we want something to continue to happen until the game ends. And so that is all of the code for the ball. Next, we're going to code our game over. We're gonna start with our win flag clicked, go to your events, pull out a win flag clicked. Next, we want to hide and show because we only want the game over to be there when the game's over, right? We don't want it there all the time. So we're gonna go back to our looks. We're gonna grab a show and we're gonna grab a hide. We're gonna put the hide right underneath our win flag clicked. And then we're gonna to go to our events. We're gonna pull out a when I receive. Mine's already on game over. If yours isn't, you could just drop down menu and select game over and then put show. And then we also want the balls to stop rolling at the end. So we're gonna do a stop all. So we're gonna to go to control, scroll down to the bottom of the control, you'll see stop all, and you can put that right underneath your show. Perfect, so now let's hit the flag and you can play. Oops, my control isn't working, there you go. Okay. So let's go back and just double check that your code looks like my code. Again, you might need to adjust your numbers and that is A-OK. -okay. We have our win flag click to our score, our forever loops, our space key, our right and left arrow. We want to check our ball. When I start as a clone, make sure you have your, your numbers and your coordinates set to whatever time makes sense for you. And actually, I'm gonna move my forever loop. I'm gonna change that to negative 10 here. Let's see how we do. Make sure my, I'm hitting the arrows. Oh, I, I ended the game already again, okay. <laughs> Let's try it again. I did it again, okay. I'm gonna make at least one point. Maybe not. <laughs> sometimes I do well at this game, sometimes I don't. <laughs> but either way, it's still really fun to try. So again, as I just adjusted different numbers, I encourage you to do that. You can also add multiple obstacles to this game. If you want it to be a little bit more challenging, you can add more balls. The balls can come higher or lower. And if you do change the plane of where the balls are, you can also change how your unicorn jumps. So if you go back to your unicorn, how you see our X and Y positions, you can make them higher or lower, if, just so it will miss your obstacles when they come. So have fun, be creative, and enjoy this game.